All right, so I'm gonna do this thing again with the camera. Well, welcome to the start of this vlog, but before we talk about books, let's see. Look at the precious baby. Anyways, so I just, I felt the need to share that. All right, what is in store for this week? I want to read all the things. I don't have time to read all the things, but those are the goals. I am reading Thunderhead with Laura from A Book Circus. It's the end of this trilogy, A. I love finishing trilogies. It makes me feel good, makes me feel productive, but also I want answers to my questions. And all I'm doing is getting more questions. So in terms of like engaging me, keeping me going, this is a good book. In terms of making me, I think the entire series has not made me care a lot about characters except here and there. Um, and the plot's always been a little weird in terms of like whether I find it to make sense or not, but I'm engaged and I want to know what's happening and I want to see what happens. We just had like, um, so this is the type of book that always has a pre-chapter snippet. It's a journal entry or, um, like a log of some event. And we just got a snippet that like, I think is from the far future. And I'm like, where are we going? So I'm really interested in that. I am continuing Words of Radiance. <sighs> I really want to finish it this week. I think I can. I'm almost halfway through and the ending is always like unputdownable. I'm very excited for the character interactions that are going to be happening. And it's just like, it's fall. It's cozy weather time. I just want to be in my blanket and read my book. It's already flannel weather. See, see my nice flannel. It's actually not that great. It's from like Old Navy and it's a female flannel, which means it's like not thick at all because women don't want warm clothes. I don't know. I could rant about clothing for women <laughs> for a long time. So, and what else? I would really like to read Binti by Nidia Korfor because A, I've been wanting to read Binti for like three years. And this is the year where I finally read the things that I've been wanting to read forever. But also I have really not been reading a lot of female authors this month. So I need to like... I need to fix that at least a little bit. So that's what I'm hoping to read, but it would also be great if I could read All Systems Red, because that's another female author. And then that's two books down for Space Opera September. And by books, I mean novellas. And well, you know, I wasn't planning to be a part of the readathon, but I'm, I'm going to try because I really want a spaceship. I have been watching so much Star Trek Next Generation and I feel like that should count. It's like the best space opera show, right? I really love Star Trek Next Generation, um, or all Star Trek. Um, and I say that as someone who really hasn't watched all of it, but every time I watch it, I'm like so happy. Uh, I used to watch it a lot as a kid. This is a tangent, but yeah, so those are the goals for the week. That's the start of this vlog and we'll see what happens. Hello. So I have read things, but first of all, I've decided because of Justine and her last vlog, I'm going to try and make a sweater. So I've started crocheting a sweater which right now it just looks like a long rectangle because that's what everything looks like when you make it. But I'm very excited. I, I guess I don't talk about it on the channel, but I crochet a lot. Um, not all the time I go through like bursts, um, but like when I was young, I really wanted to learn how to make a doily. This is the doily I made. I've made actually quite many doilies. This is the one I made for me. And in order to learn how to make that, you have to learn how to make other things because this is it looks more complex than it is, but it does require finesse and skill and good dexterity, which like you start with yarn. So I've made blankets and scarves, mostly those. This is my first time trying to make clothing. It should be fine. We'll see, I've never even like looked at my gauge or whatever it's called. So I don't even know how bad I am with the pattern. We'll figure it out. But I'm hoping to do that while watching booktube and also listening to Empire of Gold. I finally got this from the library again when I didn't have an audiobook, and I'm like, yes, get now because my month's crazy and I still want to finish this series and I really like the audiobooks so that's what I'm doing. I'm only a prologue and a chapter in because I listened to it on my way to Michael's to get yarn and I got this thing over here that you guys can't see that I like was really excited for. It solves a lot of my storage problems. So yay! I've also been working on Thunderhead. Um, buddy reading this with Laura from a book circus, like I say all the time when I talk of the arc of a scythe, which intrigues me because we follow many scythes, and now I'm realizing the series name is a scythe, so that's interesting. I don't know if that will mean anything, and I have thoughts, quite a few. Um, so I think I've had this 
internal complaint the whole time I've read the series and it's just gotten more and more obvious to me the more and more pages I spend reading this author's work and that is he does a lot of showing not telling of character relationships which I don't think I mind maybe in one book or maybe even a two books like you know a scythe and thunderhead but like I'm in the middle of a 600 page book and I still don't really know characters that well that I've known from the first book and when I am learning things about them I'm being told that they are this way because of x that has happened and I didn't conveniently get to see x because this is way more like world building driven which honestly like I'm really enjoying that part I'm really enjoying the whole how are we going to get to this end point because I think we've alluded to in some of the pre-chapters where this will end up and I'm like ooh, how are we getting there I also feel like not that this is like a negative but it's definitely more apparent in this book that there is um, some things Neil Schusterman wanted to say about corrupt politics. Um, one of the characters you have is definitely feels like a statement for basically extreme politics in any country. It feels very um, similar to things that happen here in the United States. So yeah, that's been interesting. I don't know. I don't mind when authors choose to like talk about like their political ideals in their books like that's fine I mean House in the Cerulean Sea was very obviously had similar things I think I get more annoyed when a it feels a little sudden like I think up to this point I guess power corruption was like a theme but now it feels more tangible which maybe that's the world's fault but this book did come out in like 2019 but it just I, I worry that I'm going to be like I'm, I've, I've been getting so much showing of that but no showing of like my character relationships and like I just want to I want to care more about these people than I do and like sometimes some of them all feel kind of the same because like I don't have anything to latch on to he's also like really misses opportunities in terms of chemistry with his characters I'll just say but I mean it's not bad um I definitely I'm not at the point where I, I'm disliking it I'm just I think now that I'm the third book into a series that's had a very direct writing style that like was fun when I was first learning about the world and then like I got to learn a lot about the world in Thunderhead now I'm in the toll I'm in the payoff and a lot of payoff comes when you have really good characters you're connected to it's not like the plots have ever been my favorite part of this series like most of the time the plot happens I'm like oh yeah I expected that why would there be stakes you know it's I mean I don't expect stakes in young adult books. I know some young adult books that do have stakes, but like, I mean, even in adult fantasy books or adult sci-fi, there's not always stakes. So I'm like, when something happens, I'm rarely like, whoa. Or if something happens that like annoyed one of my friends, I'm like, oh, well, they've been ridiculous from the start. Why would I care now? But um, that's to say though, that it's still like really readable and like I am really interested like I want I have questions and I want answers and I hope I'm satisfied with those answers because that's why I'm still reading it and enjoying my time and what else am I reading I'm still reading words of radiance I don't have much more to say on that yeah I don't have any updates there really I'm just continuing reading it I haven't read that much since I last talked about it but I did finally <laughs> after years of staring at it on my shelf not even at my shelf just on my goodreads shelf I've read Binti and a short story. I got really confused because I have like the Binti collection. So it has Binti, Binti a Sacred Fire, and then Binti Home, and then the last Binti novella. And I was trying to figure out, because I just wanted to read Binti, <laughs> how long Binti was. And everyone's like, it's 96 pages. But 96 pages was Binti and the short story. But when I look online, that short story wasn't published till this collection came together. So I don't know. I just read both in case they were both in like the separate binti i don't know but binti if you don't know this is by nidia korfor this is a story about a young girl who i'm blanking on her name i guess her name's binti why am i so crazy why am i like this and she's really great with math and this is another sci-fi kind of similar to um nine fox gambit where math can lead to really really cool side effects <laughs> so i really like that like she has this really good connection with math and because of her connection with math, she can like create these currents that cause these things to happen. And she's so good at math, she gets to go to the school. So on Binti's travels to the school, bad things happen. She has to maneuver those things. It involves learning about another culture, about compromise. 
and it was really interesting. I really liked learning about Binti's culture and her relationship being the only person from, I think she's from the Himba tribe, being this area. I, I don't know, it was really short, so it's hard to like gain a lot from it. I was kind of tired also when I read it, but like the more I think about it, the more like I was, I really fell into the story and I really liked it other than like, it was kind of sad. Um, and then the short story really explores like her response to that trauma, which I thought was really important and nice. So I'm definitely excited to continue this series eventually. I was basically reading it for Space Opera September, so check. I can't read more of it to help me with the challenges, so I need to go read <laughs> Murderbot or something else hopefully later this week. So that is this update, and apparently my cat's made a mess, so I've got to go help with that. <laughs> I don't really know what he's looking at when he looks up at the sky and you might hear some scratching because I closed the door to talk to you guys and Delilah got trapped in here with me and she does not like to be trapped but maybe she'll be calm for this check-in who knows but let's let's talk about it because I finished the toll right I finished it okay the toll Neil Schusterman I have a lot of thoughts um throughout these three books I've noticed a critique I've had that I've kind of let go, a couple critiques that I think were just exacerbated in this book. I don't know. Hey, Delilah. There she is. And that the two things are kind of plot conveniences and plot holes that like why they're just like arbitrary like obstacles but fine whatever and not very great character work. And what I mean by that is I am told a lot of things about characters and character relationships but I'm not shown them, um, especially in this book. We have a lot of new characters. All right, you want down? Go down. We have a lot of new characters that are introduced and all of a sudden after like 50 or 100 pages because something off screen happens or off page and I'm told that now they are the best of friends, this person would die for this other person. And I'm just like, really? That doesn't, I didn't see this develop. This would have been a great time for me to see this develop. So even with those two things, though, I've been primarily reading this series because of the world building and the intrigue and the mystery and the where are things going to end up. And that, I think, really was well done. Like, that ending. I really like the ending. Um, it's a good ending to the book. It's a good ending to the trilogy. I'm not going to say this is my favorite book in the trilogy. I think my favorite's the first book. So alas, this followed the normal trajectory. Of dystopian YA which is where the first book is my favorite and the third book's my least favorite this has happened to me with now three different oh let me get the cat Lila <sighs> okay where was I so the toll was good the buddy read was good but I think it was just good it wasn't great it wasn't amazing it was fine um, I am curious, um, there are some people who I know really didn't like the ending, I know some people who did, I would love to talk about that, so like, spoiler tag that up in the description, because for me, I really did like that I felt throughout the entire series, breadcrumbs were left so that I could maybe not guess where we were going, but when he revealed where we were going, I was like, this makes sense. You have been kind of implying that something like this could happen the whole time. I love when there's planning like that, like that's cool. So I was good with that. Oh, another thing I liked about the ending is that I felt like there really were kind of stakes, which I don't get a lot in most books, honestly. I'm not even going to say just young adult, like there are a lot of books that don't commit to stakes. And I felt like how some things wrapped up were bittersweet and in a good and satisfying way. So like I said, I think this book was great in terms of elevating the series to maybe like a three and a half, four star series, but the book itself is maybe more of like a three star book, like a fine book, like a, a good read sort of thing. So yeah, that's another thing. I'm like trying to figure out my rating these days and like I've, I think I'm finally finding like a rating system that like emphasizes the things I like most in a reading experience, such as how engaging a story is, and things like that. I don't know. I'll probably make a video for it once I feel committed <laughs> to whatever I'm doing. And I already talked about Binti, which I finished, and I'm still on Words of Radiance. I am. I'm getting into the Sandra Lanch, guys, and I'm still stressed. 
super stressed. I also just met Lyft. So I can talk about Lyft because she's in an interlude and really doesn't have anything to do with the main plot of the story for now. <laughs> Lyft is this kid character and really solidifies for me that I'm like not big on Sanderson writing kid characters or like young characters. I don't know. She's not actually bad. I really like her relationship with um, her spren. I think that's a really cute dynamic. Um, I think who she is is super intriguing and mysterious. Like, I like her in the story, but her personality grates on me. And it's like, what are the th characters I've hated most of Sanderson are, I think his name's Dave or David from Steelheart. I could be wrong. Spensa is kind of grates on me. And Lyft. Now, I think David and Lyft are both in their teens. Like, David, I think, is like 13 or 14. And Lyft is like... 10 but it's weird and Spence is supposed to be 17 and I just don't believe it like I know you can be that immature at 17 like I know but she's in kind of a dystopian hellscape and I just feel like she acts like she's 13 or 14 regardless when a character is given these attributes I just find them too I don't know what the word is they just make me cringe and I'm uncomfortable and I think my one friend was talking about how she like uses a word that is um really hasn't been shown in the vernacular of this world like it's an english word it's not a made-up word but it kind of takes you out of the story so i don't know but i don't hate lift but i it's weird i like her for the mystery behind her like backstory and i do think she's like kind of has a funny outlook on life but she was the first character i read by sanderson where i was like this is probably my least favorite character by you, but she's still fine. And then I read his young adult stuff. So I think when he tries to get into what his interpretation of the mind of a child is, it's just like personalities that like great with me. I'm not saying they're inaccurate or anything. Obviously children think in weird ways and every kid is very unique and individual. It's just not my thing. So that's stuff I've been working on. I'm hoping to finish Words of Radiance in the near future before picking up my next physical read. And I'm still listening to Empire of Gold. I don't have much to update you guys on. I'm only a couple chapters in, but like, ah, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, I don't know, the other books I knew, like, but this one I don't. And I have some opinions about where I want relationships to go or not go. And I could be convinced certain ways that are not in my, not bingo card, but like my checklist, but we shall see. Um, so that's it for the reading. Finished Binti and the Toll. Started Empire of Gold. Continued Words of Radiance. So I'm feeling good. Um, videos. So on Monday, I had my fall series TBR videos. If you want to know what I'm trying to focus on in terms of like my big epic series for this season, that's up and ready to watch on Friday. Let's see. What was it for Friday? Oh, it's my fall book tag video. I was tagged by Amber, so I filmed that. So I just need to edit that. And this weekend, you get a bonus video from Ryan. He wanted to do a book review and accidentally did a wrap-up, too. He, like, I didn't know he was planning this, but he started, like, wrapping up his COVID reads real quick. And I'm like, huh, you are a natural at this. If only you read more than a book a month. <laughs> but those are videos to look forward to. Monday's probably my October TBR, which I still haven't figured out. It depends on what I read this week. I have no clue how much I'll get done. Ideally, all the things. Realistically three or four <laughs> so that's it for this one um oh ooh, hopefully i did it for michael nip but there should be a clip of my boyfriend's dog her name is goldie and she's adorable and kind of acts like a cat so yeah if you want me to just know you're here leave an emoji of a dog in honor of goldie and like if you liked it subscribe if you want to and i'll see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.